The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. <laughs> Presenting America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And now let's see what's going on in the Nelson family. Harriet. Mom's not home, Pop. She went downtown shopping. Oh. Just you and Ricky taking care of the house? Yep, we keep an eye on stuff. Oh, that's fine. You're getting to be big boys. What are you doing, just sitting here in the house? We're looking at a magazine. It's a neat one, boy. Lots of swell pictures in it. Oh, that's good. Did you get a new comic book? No, it's Mom's magazine. Right here. Oh, Harper's Bazaar. Well, boys, this isn't the kind of a magazine that... Well, certainly there's something else in the house you can look at. Mom was looking at it this morning. Well, yes, I know, but... It's mostly pictures, see? Mm-hmm. <laughs> see something there, Pop? Mm-hmm. No, no, Ricky. I was just glancing through. <laughs> you see, this magazine is not intended for men. It's for girls. Why are you looking at it? Well, I'm not exactly looking at it, David. I'm just glancing. How long is a glance? <laughs> Sure got some funny-looking dresses in there. I'm glad Mom doesn't have to wear them. Ah, that's right, David. Fortunately, Mother's tastes run more to the conservative. Her clothes are always neat and attractive, and she always looks very smart. Mom is smart, boy. She's the smartest one in our whole family. Isn't she, Pop? Mm, well, yes, I guess you could say that. <laughs> Well, you can see how Ozzy and the boys feel. Mother will never be lured into any of these super styles. Oh, but wait a minute. Harriet's gone into that downtown den of fashion, the La Parisienne dress shop. Well, she's even put on one of the dresses. Oh, oh, relax, folks. It's just a nice, conservative, tailored dress. Oh, that's very smart. You wear that sort of thing well. Oh, thank you. It's a very nice dress. Excuse me, honey. Can I borrow half your mirror for a second? Oh, <laughs> well, yes, yeah, certainly. Go ahead. Wow. <laughs> That's some dress you've got on there. Well, isn't it simply sensational, honey? I'm telling you, I took one look at it and slipped. <laughs> I just couldn't wait to try it on. But how does it fit in the back? Well, it fits. <laughs> well, I like him to sit like that, real snuggy. Are you going to buy that dress you have there? No, I don't think so. I've used up my shopping quota for today. I sort of like it, though. Oh, no, that's not for you. You could walk down the street and that, and you wouldn't get a whistle. Oh, there's no flash to it. You want a dress that hits a man right in the eye. Well, my husband prefers... I know, I know. They all say that, but don't you believe it. What a man wants is glamour, plenty of style. He wants a wife that looks like Lana Turner, not C. Aubrey Smith. <laughs> well, I know, but my husband seems to prefer the more conservative dresses. Don't you believe it? The burlesque show is filled with men whose wives dress conservative. <laughs> if you want to hold a man, give him glamour, plenty of spice. I dress for my husband and I keep him dizzy. <laughs> oh, that's what he likes. Don't kid yourself, honey. It's what all men like. Just like this dress. The old razzle-dazzle. But somehow, I don't think I'm quite the razzle-dazzle type. Good luck with the dress, Rose. Goodbye, honey. Have you decided to take that dress? Oh, you look absolutely sensational in it. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, but I can't take it with me. No. You see, I have a system with my husband. I never buy anything. I let him surprise me. Really? Yeah. Now, I'll go home, and I'll hint just a little that I saw the most terrific dress on the third floor of the La Parisienne dress shop but I just couldn't think of buying it. Oh. Then he'll come in tomorrow afternoon, pick it up, and surprise me with it. Well, that sounds like quite a system. <laughs> I'll set the dress aside. Oh, thank you. Oh, say, I hope I recognize your husband when he comes in for it. What does he look like? He looks just like Gregory Peck. Oh, yes. Only with big, broad shoulders and black, wavy hair, sort of like Carrie Grant. Oh. But you can't miss him. He's tall, broad, and massive. He has eyes that send electric shocks all through you. Right. His voice makes your heart pound like a hammer, and when he smiles, you just melt. You'll recognize him. Yes, I'm sure I'll recognize him. All I'm worried about is surviving. Hi, Mom. Hello, David. What did you buy? Nothing much, Ricky. Pop's home. He's in on the couch. I think he's taking a nap. Mm-hmm. Still asleep. Don't they look peaceful, Daddy and Nick? A man and his dog. Who's been reading Harper's Bazaar? 
I don't think it was Nick. <laughs> Soft as a kitten there. Light as an angel. No, oh, oh, oh dear. I just closed my eyes for a minute there. How did this magazine get on my chest? I guess Nick must have brought it in. Nick, you're a bad dog. <laughs> oh, golly, am I tired. How come you're so tired, Mom? I've been shopping all morning. I'm hungry, Mom. I'll have dinner in a few minutes, Ricky. Ooh, feels good to get these shoes off. I mean, you're all tired out just shopping? Just shopping? Why is it a man can't understand what a job it is to shop? I wish you had to go downtown shopping just one day. You see what it's like to tramp all over the stores. What'd you buy, Mom? Three washcloths. <laughs> What's that do? Oh, I'll explain it to you, Ricky. Suppose you need washcloths. You go to the nearest store, ask for three washcloths, pay for them, and go home. Is that shopping? Oh, I should say not. Shopping is when you get dressed, leave some food in the refrigerator for your family's lunch, leave the key next door so the plumber can get in to fix the sink, put a note on the door telling the laundryman the bundle is on the back porch, and then you get on a crowded bus and go downtown. Now, just a then minute. Then you go to three stores pricing washcloths. Then you find that the most reasonably priced don't go with your towels. So you go to three more stores pricing towels. And on the way, you check on the prices of the drapes you bought last month to be sure they didn't go down any. And you see a hat. You don't need it. You don't want it. You can't afford it. So you go in and try it on. <laughs> by that time, it's five o'clock. So you get on a crowded bus and go home. And that's shopping. What about the washcloths? Oh, oh, the washcloths. The next day, you send your husband to the nearest store to buy three washcloths. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very funny, dear, but you happen to be wrong this time because I got the washcloths. Yeah. Oh. And they happen to match just perfectly. Yeah. Would you like to see them? Yeah. Not especially. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got them practically unwrapped now, so you'll see them whether you want to or not. I had to go to three stores before I found the blue washcloths that match out. Oh, for goodness sakes, he wrapped up the pink ones. There's a woman for you. Yes, sir, there's a woman for you. Where's the woman for me? <laughs> you know, I guess you're right, dear. I happened to see a dress I didn't need and couldn't afford, so I just had to go in and try it on. Oh, it was a beautiful dress, too. What I'd like to know is how you happened to get into a dress shop when you were looking for washcloths. Well, it was just my luck. The La Parisienne dress shop is right next door to the 5 and 10. Mm-hmm. I better get started on dinner. With all the complaints I've been getting today, I may lose my job. What job? This job. You mean Mom's afraid she's going to lose it? Oh, Ricky, don't be a dope. Pop, is Mom afraid that... What are you writing, Pop? La Parisienne dress shop. I guess I can find it in the phone book. What's that for, Pop? Well, I just thought it might be fun if I went down and bought that dress your mother liked. Don't say anything, though, because I want to surprise you. Third floor out, please. Third floor, afternoon dresses, ladies' lingerie, corsets. <laughs> My wife, I'm buying a... a sword. Pardon me. I... Keep moving, please. Yes. <clears throat> Rather embarrassing. Oh, Mrs. Rafferty, a customer for you. Mrs. Rafferty. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what these dummies are made of. I suppose it's some sort of plaster. Yes, it sounds like plaster, but it feels more like. Pardon me. <laughs> Can I help you, or do you want to be alone? Oh, no. <laughs> I wanted to buy something. I, I was just wondering what these dummies are made of. <laughs> <laughs> Most men do. <laughs> what were you looking for? Well, uh, this is a little hard to explain. My wife was in here yesterday afternoon looking at a dress, and she mentioned she liked it very much, and I'd kind of like to buy it for her as a surprise. Oh, well, I really... Oh, wait a minute. Was she in here around 4 o'clock yesterday? Mm, yes, it must have been just about 4. Oh, I remember her very well. Oh. 
In fact, I've got the dress put aside. You put it aside? Yes. She said she kind of thought you might come in for it. Oh. In fact, she told me quite a bit about you. Oh, she didn't really. Yes, oh, she did. well, dog and I. <laughs> Why? She went on and on about uh, her big, handsome husband with uh, his magnificent physique oh. and, and his irresistible. You are the husband, aren't oh, you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm... Yes, you bet. Sure. Would you like to see the dress? Yes, uh, I can get it for you in just a minute. Well, no, no, that's okay. You, you're sure my wife likes it? Oh, she just loved it. It'll only take me a minute if you'd like to see it. Mm. No, that's really not necessary. If she likes it, that's good enough for me. Just have them put it in a box, will you, with a nice big bow on it, and I'll take it home. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It'll be ready in a jiffy. What a surprise this is going to be. <laughs> Oh, I had a couple of things to do downtown. Nothing important. What have you got there? Where? In that big, beautiful box with the red bow on it. Oh, oh, this. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but right next to the 5 and 10, there's a very cute dress shop. I believe they call it the La Parisienne. And oh, Ozzy, you bought me a new dress. Well, I just happened to be passing oh, by. Oh, darling, and you uh, picked it up uh, and uh, all by yourself. Let me see it. Now, uh, now don't be in such a hurry. It. You might not even like it, oh, you know. stop. I don't know. They said down at the shop, it's the very latest style. Pretty glamorous. They said. Haven't you seen it? Well, uh, uh, well that is, let's put it this way. I happen to know that when you open up that box and see the dress, you're going to let out a stream of delightful surprise. Oh, darling, you shouldn't have done it. Oh. I'm so nervous I'm all firm. I know it's going to be... Ah! <laughs> I bet you didn't think I'd pick out a dress like that. I certainly didn't, dear. I... How did you happen to pick out a dress like that? Oh, well... <laughs> I, I think it's... Uh, there's, a dress. there's a dress that'll definitely do something to uh, for her. I, I knew you'd be pleased with it. It's, oh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's tremendous. Uh, you like it? Oh, it, it, the important thing is that you like it. Well, I like it if you like it. Oh, well, I like it if you like it. it uh, after all, you're the one who has to wear it. That's true. But you're the one who has to look at it. Yeah. Well, as long as you're sure you like it. it, it oh, uh, I'm sure I like uh, it if you're sure you like it. Oh, uh, uh, let's take it out of the box, shall we? Yeah, that's a good idea. It's the very latest style, I understand. Oh. Oh, yes. And it's a very unusual color. Lovely material, too. Yes, it does feel... Oh, pardon me. It's... Well, that's all right. It's only padding. Oh, I, I thought there was somebody still in it. <laughs> Hold it up a minute, Ozzy. I want to see how it looks. Hold it against your shoulder. That's it. Hey, Mom, can we... Oh, it's... This is your mother's dress, Ricky. Your father just bought it for me. You like it, boy? Well, I'll bet it looks swell on Mom. I like it better on Pop. <laughs> Gee, it sure has some fancy colors. Hey, come around here, Ricky, and look at these big pockets. Those are pads, David. Gee, just like a football suit. You can fall down any time you want to. Why don't you put it on, Mom? Yeah, yeah, that's an idea. Why don't you put it on? It might not look so... I, I mean, why don't you uh, put it on, dear? Okay, if you want me to. You wait right there, fellas. Right, Pop, isn't that kind of a funny-looking dress? Believe me, son, you're no more confused than I am. And get over it. Well, your mother seems to like it, so let's try to cooperate. After all, styles change. We may be a little old-fashioned. Me too? No, so what I mean is that we're accustomed to seeing mother in certain types of conservative clothes. Guess we'll just have to get used to this new stuff. Ozzy! Yes? Will you come out here and give me a hand? What's the matter? Can't you get it on?
In case you were planning on stopping in at 1847 Rogers Road this afternoon, well, I'd wait a while. Things are a little upset at the Nelsons. You see, Ozzy bought a dress for Harriet and... Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Ozzy up the street now. Oh, poor guy. He's worried. Walking along, head down. Now he turns in at... Hey, Ozzy, you live next door. That's the wrong house. That's the Thornberry's. Well, hello, Oz. Hello, dear. This is, no, uh, Thorny, I, I, I didn't know you were over here. <laughs> Where'd you expect me to be? We live here, you know. Hey, wait, this is your house. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry walking right in like that. It's a silly thing to do. Oh, that's all right, huh? Of course, our houses do look quite a bit alike. Sure, just a very slight difference. Yours is white and ours is brown. <laughs> You must have something on your mind, Oz. Something bothering you? I guess I was thinking about something else. Uh, come on out on the porch, Thorny, will you? I want to talk to you. What seems to be bothering you, Oz? You know, Thorny, you meet a girl, you think you know her. You're married to her for 11 years, and then you suddenly find out she's an entirely different woman. Sounds exciting. Take Harriet, for instance. Yesterday she went down and picked out a new dress, and Thorny, you ought to see it. I did see it. You did? A little while ago. I was in the shower when Catherine saw Harriet coming up the street. She made me grab a towel and drip clear to the living room to see. I don't know what came over Harriet picking out a thing like that. A mother with two fine sons trying to look like something out of a Technicolor production. Yeah. And doing it, too. Hey. Wait a minute, Thorny. A thought just hit me. If somebody outside the family were to tell her the dress looks awful, she'd probably change her mind. It's possible. You see what I mean, Thorny? It's a serious thing. A dress like that could warp the entire structure of our home. Well, Oz, you know I'll do anything to help. Anything. Well, then listen. Why don't you do this? About five minutes from now, come over to our house. When you see the dress, really... Yeah, yeah, really let yourself go. Uh -huh. Say the most awful things you can think of. Make up anything. Well, see? it's a little out of my line, Oz, but I'll do my best. Oh, I, I sure would appreciate it, and Shh. I... Shh! Hmm? Somebody may be listening. Oh, yeah. Pretend we're talking about something else. A uh, nice uh, day today, isn't it? <laughs> Certainly is. Can you make it in about uh, five minutes? Five minutes on the nose. Well, that's well. Just knock on the front door. Don't you worry about a thing. I... Oh, you're, uh, you're a good neighbor, Thorny. <laughs> Forget it. I, uh, I hear the Dodgers uh, won yesterday. Yeah. I wonder whatever happened to those flying discs. You're sure this is okay now, Oz? It, it, it seems like kind of a dirty trick. Well, just think of our home, Thorny. Think of David and little Ricky. Think of me. I'll just think of David and little Ricky. <laughs> hey, Mom. What, David? There's a lady at the door. She wants to see you. I'll be right there. Oh, hello there. Hello, Mrs. Nelson. Remember me? We were looking at dresses together at the La Paracy and... Oh, you got the dress on. It looks terrific. Well, that's what my husband seems to think. Please come in. What a time I had finding you. You know, I went home and told my husband about that dress, and he went right down to the store to buy it for me, and it was gone already. I saw it first, and they promised they'd save it for me. Oh, well, then by all means, you should have it. Well, but I don't want to take it away from you, honey. Believe me, you'd be doing me a favor. You sure you don't want it? Oh, absolutely. The only reason I kept it was so I wouldn't hurt my husband's feelings. Okay, honey, then I'll take it. Uh, Harriet! Uh, oh, oh, excuse me. I uh, didn't this know is my it. husband. Oh. Ozzy, this is Mrs. Uh... McKeister, Mrs. Clark McKeith. Oh, how do you do? I'm very happy Ozzie, to know you. listen, dear, there's been a terrible mistake. It seems there was a mix-up down at the store, and this dress has been promised to Mrs. McKeister. So, well, give it to her. I, I, I mean, if, if it really belongs to her, we really... Uh, do you want to take it right with you? Well, it's, it's very nice of you to take it this way, dear. I know how much you like the dress. Oh, well, what's right is right. And... Well, I feel as if I should No, 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 take it with you. I insist, Mrs. McKeister. I, I know it's a great disappointment to my... Uh, well, you better run upstairs and change the dress, Harriet. Wasn't there somebody at the door? Door? No one must be the wind in the trees. It's... Oh, it is the door. No, yes. no, we don't need anything. Uh, hurry up there, Harry. Thorny's not. Thorny? It, it, oh, oh, well, it's much cooler outside. Let I'll him wait. let him in. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Harriet. I'll get it. Let's... Come on in, Thorny. Hello, Harriet. Uh, I'm busy, Thorny. I'm sorry. So I'll see you again, old boy. Goodbye. So that's I'm your very... new dress, Harriet. Uh, uh, come again when you can stay longer. Auntie, you're pushing him. I have to. He won't move. <laughs> Harriet, I think that that dress is. Oh, too. Oh, dear. Look where you're stepping. Oh. Thorny, this is 
and Mrs. McKeister. Mr. Thornberry. Oh, Thornberry. Pleasure. How do you do? All changed. Harriet, I know the this whole... is a terrible thing to say, no. but you are the fourth woman I've seen today in a dress like that. No, no, it's great, kid. They <laughs> said at the store it was an exclusive model. Yes. It was awfully nice of you to drop over. Sorry. Yes, stop in any time. Let me time, see the cloth please. in that dress. Oh, oh, Harriet, whoever sold you this thing really saw you come. No, the very cheapest sort of material. No, it's... I have a hunting shirt made of the same stuff. Uh, Thornberry. And, and how it shrinks. I got out in the rain and almost choked me to death. Go, go! Cut that out, Oz. You kicked me right in the... Mrs. McKeister, if you come up... <laughs> if you come upstairs, Mrs. McKeister, I'll give you the dress and you can take it right home. Well, if there are dresses like it all over town, it's going to shrink. Believe me, I wouldn't one. buy my wife a dress that's hanging in every two-bit shop. Thorny, Thorny, this is not Harriet's dress. It belongs to Mrs. McKeister. She's going to take it home with her. Oh, really? No. No, I'm sorry. I changed my mind. I don't think I'll take it after all. Oh, wait, please. No, it wouldn't be the same. Thanks anyway, Mr. Smith. You suppose it was something I said? <laughs> Thorny, why do you do those things? We were getting along fine until you came in. But I was going to would... take the dress and you spoiled it. Oh, all... you mean you wanted to get rid of the dress, too? Well, to be perfectly frank with you, Harriet, I... Too? Harriet, you were trying to get rid of it yourself? Well, I thought you were the one who liked the dress. You bought it. Isn't it the one you picked out at the store? Oh, no, dear. This is the one Mrs. McKeister likes. Well, it's a nice dress, but it's not your type, Harriet. That's that's glamour stuff. Now, wait, Thorny. How would you like it if I came into your house and told you your wife wasn't glamorous? <laughs> well, I didn't say that, Aunt. Well, I don't think it's exactly a glamour dress, would you say, dear? Well, no, but... Well, what's wrong with a little glamour? Since when is it a crime for a woman to wear fashionable clothes? Well, I know, but it's it's such a horrible color. Oh, I don't think so, Thorny. Say, I have a brilliant idea. If you don't like the dress, and you don't like the dress, why don't you send it back to the store and forget the whole thing? Yes, that's an idea. It's not that it isn't a nice dress, but it's so extreme and unusual and, and exotic. And maybe the store won't take it back. Well, I know, dear, but I'm sure you wouldn't want me to wear a dress that's so unusual and outstanding and glamorous. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it'd be fair to send it back since I'd worn it once. Listen, if you folks want to get rid of the dress, I think I know somebody who Just might... Just a second, Thorny. Hello? Oh, yes, Catherine, right here. For you, Thorny, your wife. Oh, hello. Well, I tried, Catherine. Yeah, I'll find out. Uh, Harriet, are you going to keep the dress? Yes, I guess I'm stuck with it. May as well make the best of it. Sorry, Catherine, I did my best, but Harriet's going to keep the dress. <laughs> well, don't worry, dear. Maybe you'll find another one just as nice. You mean Catherine wanted the dress, too? No wonder you couldn't understand my subtle hints like getting pushed out and kicked in the shins. Sorry, Oz, old man. I, I had orders from higher up. Wait a minute, Thorny. First the woman at the store, then Harriet, and then your wife. Do you realize what's happening? Not only to us, but to millions of people. We are being caught in a whirlpool of changing fashions. Before you know it, women all over the country will be wearing these monstrous new dresses. Think of all the lovely girls who'll be hidden under pads, patch pockets, bustles, and yards and yards of material. What do you say to that, Thorny? Just this, Oz. As my good friend Riley would say, what a revolting development this is. <laughs> listening to the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>